Okay. Can, can, I just, can I just bring the attention of everyone? Yeah. You know, the challenges to the finance bills, it's not this is not the first time. Okay. In petition number 532 of 2013, that is Robert Gakuru and others was the governor of Kiambu County. Residents of Kiambu went to court to challenge their finance bill, the equivalent of the national finance bill. Yeah. And the court nullified that finance bill. It didn't mean that Kiambu County failed to collect taxes after oh. that. And mo they can continue because those revenue raising measures that were there before, yeah. the legislation that set them up are still continuing. So even now, okay. not all revenue raising laws in Kenya were amended by the Finance Act. They are still in force. A Finance Act, even if you look at it, it is not a standalone act. It's an act that amends other revenue raising legislation. So they stop the conservative orders by the court. Does not affect, even if the court nullified mm -hmm. this finance act, there is no crisis. We still revert back 2020. to 2022 act and what is amended, and that is what we'll use to raise revenue for the country. But more importantly, yeah. there's one thing that Senator Kalwali has said, which I must respond to. The issue that sometimes you take, you break away from even, even when you are the minority, yeah. mm -hmm. that you are leading the people to a point. Even when they refuse. Even if they refuse. Call to our Constitution, Article 10 and Article 118, yeah. is what we call public participation. Mm -hmm. And in the Kiambu Finance Bill case, the court discusses what does it mean when we say public participation. It must not only be quantitative, but it must be qualitative. Quantitative in terms of numbers, but qualitative in terms of the aspect. How do you take into account what the people have said? Such that if the people 90% as per the opinion polls of Kenyans have said no to the finance bill. You cannot say that these 90% are so wrong. <coughs> Maybe you've just not socialized them enough yeah. into these new revenue raising measures that you want to undertake to their benefit. So don't force your will on them. Otherwise, you are going to reduce our component of public participation to be nothing. Because then it means whatever the leader says is what ultimately carries the day. Yeah. That was the architecture of our laws before 2010. But the new constitution, 2010, moves us to a point where whatever you are doing, you must carry the people along with you. So probably Kenya Kwanza yeah. and the, admin, the administration have not been able to carry along the people on why this revenue raising measure. So go back and talk to the people, convince them, and carry them along with you. Yeah. before you now impose your will on them through a legal fiat. Mm -hmm. That is what they are doing. And the constitution is telling them, no, 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 wait a minute. In Kiambu 2013, they did the same thing. Yeah. They decided to pass a finance bill saying even raising rates of 100% of what was being charged previously. The court told them, no, mm -hmm. you must go back to your people, sit down with them, explain to them these revenue raising measures they are coming up with, hear their views before you can now impose a tax burden on them. And finally, yeah. Kenyans are not denying or refusing the finance bill just because they don't want to pay tax. Kenyans pay tax every day. But you've reached a point where you are trying to tax Kenyans beyond what they can afford. What Kenya Kwanza is trying to do, if you look at the revenue estimates on domestic uh, on, on tax, they are trying to raise one trillion more in one year than they raised in the previous year. They are raising the revenue target by more than one trillion. It took Kibaki 10 years yeah. to move our revenue target, re revenue raising measures from 290 billion when Moi left to 800, almost 900 billion by the time Kibaki was leaving. It took Uru 10 years to raise it from 900 billion to 1.8 trillion the time he was leaving. So what actuaries will tell us is that to get the one trillion target, takes around 10 years. Because it's the same cow as I always say. You cannot say, and Senator Boni is a bullfighter. You cannot say that a cow that you raised, that last year you milked, or last yesterday you milked and raised a liter. a liter of milk, that now tomorrow you are going around in the market telling people, I'm now going to supply 10 liters of milk. <laughs> from the same? From the same cow. It's the same feeds. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> water that you feed this cow is the same environment, same climate. Yeah. What is this miracle that is going to make the cow now produce 10 liters of milk okay. today than it did yesterday? Okay. So also with our taxation, yeah. it's the same economy, mm -hmm. it's the same taxpayer, it's the same, and in fact, worse, worse of it is that even the econo our economic situation is even dwindling. Yeah. Because you see a very hostile government to certain major players 
who pay large taxpayers. Look, for example, at what they're doing in the edible oil subsector. You technically taking on a sector that pays <coughs> between 40 billion to 50 billion per year on taxes. You are now trying to push them out of the market yeah. by giving an opportunity for people to import refined edible oil, palm oil, that is finished product. So that cow, that, that, that sector that was produced, giving you 50 billion per year, because of these other measures you are coming up with, they will not be able to give you your 40 billion per year. Okay. They are going to cut on jobs. Yeah. They are going to reduce on, uh, on how much they are paying. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. In regard to the finance bill, yeah. Kenya Kwanzaa, got it fundamentally wrong. And I'll come back later to explain to you okay. why are they trying to raise one trillion shillings okay. in one year okay. than the previous administrations. 